Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I wanted to talk about graphic design today because you cannot work in a museum or a heritage uh, context or setting without working with graphic design or without coming across it. It's everywhere. It's not just in exhibitions or display settings. It's something you come across all the time. And you will be working with graphic designers or visual designers uh, from all sorts of backgrounds when you're working, especially in interpretation or storytelling or when you are trying to highlight a narrative somehow. So I wanted to go through what actually is graphic design, first of all, but also give a few examples of how it can be used, because I'm sure you've come across it in so many different places. But as always, if you like the content of these videos, please like them, subscribe to the channel and add your comments. It's always great to hear from you. What actually is graphic design? Well, I've often heard it being described as art with a purpose and there is a truth in this because in many ways it's about visual content that's used to communicate messages. Now that can be done via images, typographics, maps, it can be done through uh, various color schemes or fonts, whatever it is. There's so many ways of getting a visual message across. It's usually a visual expression of a message or a particular mood or emotion. It can be a setting a specific atmosphere but it can also very much be part of forming experiences, particularly in a, an exhibition context. Now in museums or heritage sites, you often see graphic design in exhibitions. So they can be part of, for example, exhibition panels, they can be images, maps, it can be various uh, visuals and so on within an exhibition setting. But it can also be something you see in leaflets, in uh, flyers and so on. So in paper that you uh, that might be handed out to you and that you can hold up close, but it can also be something bigger like a banner or something that that you see from far away. Uh, a very good example is uh, things like um, hoardings or uh, scaffolding or something like that, which is it's just wonderful to be working with uh, when you work in interpretation because it's literally a blank canvas that's been given to you and um, you get to paint it in whatever color and with whatever messages you, you want to. There are so many great examples of hoarding being used um, uh, as part of interpretation um, and uh, they can be quite colorful because sometimes they have to attract visitors from quite far away but they can also make visitors aware of what's actually going on here usually you can see there's some sort of building work or repair work going on but it might not be clear what it is and a hoarding really provides you with an opportunity of explaining uh, first of all what are we doing here right now but also why is it important to actually restore and to preserve and conserve uh, these historical buildings so it's a wonderful way of um, of uh, bringing that connection with visitors and audiences into it as well because uh, there is a huge part of conservation and restoration going on in uh, the work we do in museums and at historical sites. It can also be used as a sort of timeline. Here is another example with um, with various dates uh, highlighted and you can use images and text and so on. So you can quite literally use hoardings as well to help you describe the history of a place. Some of the key aspects of working with graphic designers is to agree on, the, well, the key messages really. It's how you uh, express the key messages, how you communicate them and how they are received. And graphic design can really be a huge help. In, in some cases, they can be, it can be crucial in how you get a message across. It's also a way of setting an atmosphere or a mood, a tone of voice, if you like, an emotional context um, within a, an exhibition setting. And it can highlight or bring specific features forward. Uh, so you can highlight certain details through visual effects uh, that you might not have been able to highlight, for example, through an object in an exhibition or indeed through, um, through a building. I just wanted to show you a few uh, uh, examples of this. If you look at the picture to the left first, this is from a historical site, from a wine cellar actually, and you can see there's a bit of uh, interior and a bit of um, interpretation going on as well. Now you have a panel in front of you. It's not um, 
particularly highlighted, but it's in reading level when you're standing up and you notice it. But it's also kept in colors that uh, sort of doesn't make it too dominant. So it's not necessarily the first thing you see when you enter this room because you don't want it to take too much attention away from uh, the other interpretation and the other exhibitions that's going on in this place. But you certainly notice it. Also, as you can see, it's uh, the text is split in two uh, to indicate two different, uh, in this case, two different languages. If you look at the picture to the right, you have a text again split in two, but uh, in the same language. Um, so it's not to indicate different languages, it's symbol, simply to indicate um, two different storylines. But you also have a person, a very strong graphic next to it, and faces and people tend to draw us in as visitors quite quite a lot. And you can tell this image is is bigger than the text and it's quite dominant. However, the text is brought forward by being sort of laid over the image a little bit. So um, you certainly notice the text, even though it's, it's kept uh, uh, kind of subtle and a little bit small. The final example I wanted to show you is from a display case where you have uh, an, uh, an object, in this case a book, in a display case, and it's open, which is always kind of intriguing, because what, what is this book about? What, what's in it? And you can see there's an image in the book as well. Then there is a little caption in front of the book, uh, again with two different languages, so you have the main language in white uh, at the top, and um, which in this case is Spanish, and you have English in sort of light blue just below it. But you also have a graphic behind the book that is used to highlight certain uh, features and certain narratives from the object and in that way help the visitors to understand what it is uh, we are looking at here. Now graphic design can also be used to encourage visitor engagements with interactives through visual effects or graphics. So they can actually be used uh, directly to encourage visitor participations as well. It can also be used, as we saw in some of the examples, to communicate specific information uh, or messages visually and not just through words or text, which we often see, or screens indeed, which we often see in, um, in exhibitions particularly. Um, but it can be a way of really highlighting uh, certain features and it can really set a specific atmosphere or mood. I think it's also important to highlight that visual elements are incredibly powerful in visitor in, uh, interaction and engagement and um, I think it's because we as human beings we often relate to something visual very strongly because it doesn't require that you can read a specific language or indeed that you can read. Children of course often respond um, in a very strong way to visuals and to colors especially. Another thing is highlighting uh, humans, especially faces, um, is a very direct way of, uh, of connecting with visitors. Do you have any good examples of graphic design and how it can be used and of visual design? It would be really lovely to hear your approach to this. Mm -hmm.